Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is part of the Thomas Sneelock Apprenticeship Program Educational Series, in which I try and teach Thomas everything I know. I don't know if I have enough time. Glenn Grossnickel made a comment on restoring a wooden handle screwdriver. He asked, where do you get your wire wheels? I've got mine from Harbor Freight. They come apart, always incoming from all the wires flying. Been teaching my son how to restore tools and I hate for him to even use them. Any suggestions where and what grade? I would like them to be a little safer. Thanks. Well, Glenn, this has been a, a ongoing problem for at least the last 60 years that I'm aware of. I started out wire wheeling things when I was about nine years old, uh, cleaning off rust from, from folding chairs for my dad. And wire wheels break. Even the really good ones will shed wires. And Harbor Freight, they're not really good grade. Uh, some are better than others at, at Harbor Freight. There's different kinds of wire wheels. Uh, the braided wire, wire wheels are a little bit more resistant to losing wires, but all of them shed wires. The reason for that is metal fatigue. Take this cup wheel, for example. Every time this wheel turns, every wire that hits the part bends just slightly depending on how much pressure you put on the wheel on the wheel and how much you're trying to remove the rust and I know the tendency is to push harder the pushing harder makes it so that the side of the wire is actually ending up cutting on the steel or removing the rust scratching it because all it is is just a, a <laughs> this is a real fast way to take one wire scratch the dickens out of the rust that's all it is. It's a single point tool with a whole ton of single points. Anyways, back to the original discussion. When you run a wire wheel, you can see that it takes a set. This one always rotates this direction. So the wires are all bent that way. Just the way things work. Every time this wire goes past the part, it flexes a little bit. That's the nature of it. That's why it's made out of wire. That's why it's spring steel wire, which is a higher grade of carbon steel. Spring steel wire will return to its original shape better than, say, uh, baling wire. Baling wire, you bend it, it stays there. A spring, you bend it, it flexes back. They want to use spring steel wire for the wire wheels so that it'll come back up. They want it to come back up and scratch again and scratch and scratch and just keep doing that. But even spring steel, even high carbon spring steel wire or uh, chrome molly wire, or any kind of wire that you can think of has what's called uh, metal fatigue. And that's where you bend something and bend something and bend something until it breaks. You've probably done that with a piece of baling wire or something like it, cotter pins. You bend them and they'll bend just so many times and then they snap. Higher grade steel, longer they last. But they still snap. And here's where the, the problem comes in. When I set up assembly lines or manufacturing processes or anything else that required a wire wheel, usually in the case of uh, welding or doing some kind of uh, brazing assembly, you need to remove the scale and rust from whatever part you're working on. Whether that's from sandblasting, grinding, wire wheeling, or uh, sanding with sandpaper. All those processes require that you apply force to a particle and remove the particle mechanically. Wire wheels do that by using the tip of the wire. The side of the wire doesn't cut. You can check that out yourself. You can rub your finger against the side of that wire quite a bit before it starts causing a problem for you. If you rub it across the end, you're going to wear your fingerprints out. 
No, I'm not suggesting that as a way to get around uh, fingerprints. It's just saying that's what happens. How do I know that? Well, I've made the mistake of touching a wire wheel while it was spinning. Anyways, we don't want to bend these wires any more than absolutely necessary. Now, if you look at the tip of a wire wheel, some wires are shorter than others. Some bend more than others, some wear way more than others. When you look at these little guys, and this is just a comparison for not size, just condition. This one is a wire wheel that's never been run. Wires are all nice and straight and they stick way out there. This is one that's been run on a Dremel tool. And you can see that the wires are broken off and bent and chunks of them missing. It's just nasty looking little wheel. This one started out looking like this one. I probably pressed too hard on this one. As it as it wears away, the wires get shorter and shorter down to the point where they're almost non-existent. The natural tendency is just to push harder. Why? Because it works. It's not a good thing to do, but it's what happens when people are faced with a situation where they need to get a job done, so they just push harder. So, consider this wire wheel with this nice big wire being pressed into doing the same amount of work that this little guy did, relatively, to the point where this one starts shedding wires, like this old boy. This guy's been in the shop now for, I honestly don't know. I think I got it when I was in my teens. I needed to clean up the valve seats on an engine. And this one was at the local hardware store and I bought it. The only reason it's lasted this long, it doesn't get used much. This one has been around about 20 years. I got this one because I was wire wheeling a whole lot of parts for a tractor. And I wanted to use an air tool. And this one fit in an air tool. It was small enough diameter to go into the spot that I needed to remove the rust from. This one, I used in a drill motor. It's about, mm, I don't know, about the same age as this one, I would imagine. Both were doing the same job. This one, because it was running a drill motor at about 1200 RPMs, quarter inch drill runs free state about 1200 RPMs. It's gonna last a lot longer then this one running in an air tool at upwards of 10,000 RPMs. Centrifugal force tends to increase with the RPMs. So this one's spinning at a high rate of speed. They do a good job removing rust. But it tends to fling off wires at a high rate of speed. What I do when I'm wire wheeling something, like I was when I was wire wheeling the screwdriver, I have this grinder set up with a coarse wire wheel on this side and a fine wire wheel on this side. This one I got from the Heritage Company. Roger had it on the shelf and he said, if you want it, take it. That's my price. So I took it. He used it to wire brush brass lamp pieces. And it's a very fine wire and it's a uh, rather, I would say a good design. This one is a Harbor Freight. It's a cheap wire wheel, but it's very coarse. The coarser the wire, the faster it cuts. Why is that? Well, because it's a stiffer wire and it doesn't flex as much. And you'll notice that this is not bent a whole lot because I don't press against it with a great deal of force. I wanna have the wire tips cut. I don't wanna have 
this thing bend over and look like this little guy because it stops working. Running it just on the tips, this wheel will last me a long, long time. There is a problem though, even with the best practice, you know, only cutting with the tips of the wire, not pushing too hard, using a coarse wire wheel in the beginning to do the heavy rust removal so you're not pushing as hard to make it cut, and then going to progressively finer wheels to, because each wheel with its progressively finer and finer wires makes smaller and smaller scratches. So the coarse wheel makes big scratches. As you go down the progression, the scratches become smaller until the point where they become almost indistinguishable from a flat surface. That's what I would suggest doing if you're going to be doing any wire wheeling to remove rust. Wire wheeling, an old pair of pliers, this is a fairly high grade of steel. You can push on it pretty hard. It doesn't scratch easily. So you can go after this one with a coarse wheel and not have any problems. The finer wheel, all it does is just polish it. When you're working with uh, mild steel, say a piece of angle iron, coarse wire wheel will leave scratches on this. And as you go down through the progressively finer wires, the scratches become smaller and smaller until they become almost indistinguishable from a flat surface. This one, you can just use the coarse wire and clean off the rust. And if you need to use a finer wire just to get into smaller spots, that's okay. It's going to hold up to the wire wheel a lot better. So how do you prevent wires from flinging out of the wheel? Well, you can pay a lot of money for wire wheels. I set up assembly lines where we had to do that and I bought the best wire wheels that I could buy because I didn't want to have to change them out very often. It took a lot of time and it made it so that the operation slowed down because as the wire wheel wears out, it cuts slower and slower. So people press harder and harder and make it fail faster. But I never found one that didn't shed wires. They all do. Metal fatigue affects every wire, no matter how good a steel it is or how much somebody charges you for it. It's still going to lose wires. They all rely on a way of crimping the wire into the wheel. And the crimp doesn't grab each individual wires. It, it grabs a bunch of wires. So nature being what it is, one of those wires is going to be less tight than the others how it works. That wire can fling out. It can fling out the minute you start the wheel or it can fling out 10 days, 20 years later. Doesn't matter. It's still going to come out of there. So what do you do then? Well, you mentioned that your son is the one you're teaching how to use a wire wheel. I regard my eyes as very important to me. I have to be able to see to do most of the things that I do in life. So I protect them whenever possible. When I'm wire wheeling, I wear a face shield. I'm not perfect. I don't always do everything I should. But I'm telling you because I want to protect your eyesight and I don't want to be responsible for you becoming blind or even suffering an injury. Because a wire entering your eye at a high rate of speed, it's a bad bad thing. Wear a face shield. I taught my son to wear a face shield. Simply because no matter what wire wheel you get, it's going to shed wire. These little guys for their size are about the most expensive wire wheels I've ever bought. Tiny little things, but they're Dremel tools and Dremel makes good parts and make good products. But the wires come out of them. No matter what I do, the wires come out of them. So wear a face shield. Have your son wear a face shield. When you first start a wire wheel, don't stand in front of it. It's going to fling wires. And they're going to come out at a high rate of speed and they tend to stick right into you. Either your face or whatever part that they happen to hit. So wear a face shield. And I think an apron is probably a good idea for some young person starting out, I tend to not wear aprons, probably should. 
one layer, one more layer of protection that uh, wire would bounce off of. Uh, leather apron wouldn't be outside the pail. But buying Harbor Freight wire wheels, it's cost effective. They don't last very long. But there's different kinds of wire wheels that you get at Harbor Freight. There's junk wire wheels. They sell a lot of those. And then there's better ones. So it's, it's a choice you have to make. You can go to uh, WW Granger or Dayton or McMaster Car and spend a great deal of money. And you're going to get an incremental increase in the life of the wire wheel, which means fewer wires breaking off of it. That's a cost benefit decision that you're going to have to make. For me, I use Harbor Freight wire wheels when they hold up. If they don't hold up, I won't buy that brand or style again. But you don't know that till you've bought one. So, long lecture, but I thought this, this subject required more than just what I could put into a comment because Quite frankly, after five minutes of reading, I tend to drift off. Most people go a lot sooner than that. So I hope that this answers Glenn's question. Since Glenn asked the question, I always assume that there's a great many people who would have asked the question but just didn't do it. So I hope I've answered the questions for all the other people too. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.